Well, now that I've got that bizarre introduction out of the way, I'll start off by saying happy Tuesday. Welcome to Crafters Autonomous. It's Amanda here again. And so for this Tuesday, I'm carrying on, you know, it's the fall theme, the Halloween theme, and I've got another pumpkin. This is my other one that I got a great deal on. You need to go back and watch that video. I'll put the link up above so you can go watch that funny story there. But today I'm going to show you guys a really fun way to carve a pumpkin. Plus, I'm going to give you some tips. So normally when you carve a pumpkin, you get your knife. Now, if you're using a knife, please be careful. Do not cut yourself, okay? So you've got a knife and you cut the top out and then you scoop all the seeds out and get all that gross stuff out. And then you come in on the side and you start carving it. And that's fine and dandy and all, but it takes a really long time. And I know for me that sometimes I'll be carving my pumpkin and I will horrifically mess it up and then I have to like rework it and then it just never turns out quite what I picture in my mind. So today what we're going to do is we're gonna cut the top out of our pumpkin and clean it out like normal, but then we are going to use a drill and different sized drill bits to make some really cool patterns on here because let's be honest, it's a lot easier to go and end up with a hole or different shapes than it is to try to take a knife and cut out triangles and intricate shapes and a mouth and stuff. So first part we need to do is we need to cut the top off. When you cut the top off, you want to not cut straight down because if you cut straight down, your top could easily fall in and especially as the pumpkin gets older and starts to shrivel a little more, it'll be more likely to fall in. So when you cut your pumpkin, you want to cut around at an angle when you cut the top off so that way even as the pumpkin does shrivel as it gets older, it will still sit nicely on top of there. So I'm going to start by cutting the top out of my pumpkin. Some tips for that. What I do is I usually just go around maybe like six or seven different spots and I'll just stick the knife in at that angle just to kind of get some of it broken apart because it's really hard to cut a circle out of the top of a pumpkin. So I'm just doing these and then I'll go back and connect them. Just a bunch of straight lines instead of trying to like go the whole circle around. So let me finish getting this top cut off. All right, so I just finished going around the edge. Once I did my initial set of slices in there, I just went in between them, did more slices around there, just kind of sticking it in gently. And then I just kind of worked in between the spots and now it is loose. So now I'm gonna take the lid off of the pumpkin. When I do that though, I'm gonna have these two bowls here ready because this first bowl is gonna be for all the gross gack pumpkin stuff on the inside. But then this bowl is going to be for the pumpkin seeds because I like to save them and put them in the oven with a little bit of like olive oil, I think, and then salt, and then you just cook them for a little bit. It's really delicious. So I'm gonna separate my gross stuff from my seeds so I can cook and eat my seeds later on. And then also to help me here, I've got this nice big spoon. I'm gonna use this to scrape out. I recommend that when you use a spoon, you either use a spoon that you don't care about or else you use a thick spoon like this because there's a possibility that as you're scraping, it would bend here. Because it's thicker, this one's not gonna bend. But sometimes you know, you've gotta really scrape to get all the gross stuff out. All right, so there's the top. I'm gonna just use my spoon and scrape along like this. Come in here with this big spoon and just keep scraping stuff out and get this clean and ready for us to carve with our drill. So I have my pumpkin goop here. I've got my seeds. I'll try to at the end of this video show you the basic process of what I do with them. And now I have this nice carved out pumpkin. So it is ready for us to start with the screwdriver. So this is where it gets fun. So I'm gonna first off move everything out of my way. Don't need these knives anymore. Don't need the pumpkin gack or the spoon. All I need is the pumpkin, the drill, and I've got this nice huge case here of different size drill bits. Now when you select a drill bit, some things you want to keep in mind is I'm going to be using a bunch of different sizes to get different results. So generally speaking, you want to go with bigger ones if you're going to have a candle in there. Because if you're going to have a candle in there, which you can get some really cool results with this, if you do put a candle or a light in there, then you're going to want larger things so that way you can see the light coming out. Because if you use one this itty bitty, you're not going to be able to see it as well. Now there are some things that we can use this for and I'll show you that I get along in my design. I'm going to start off by using a large size drill bit. This is a 3 8 size drill bit. And there's one other thing I'm going to do. I'm going to use some cling wrap. Now, you don't need a piece this big. 
I just pulled a big piece off. But start by taking your cling wrap and getting a piece, you know, about yay big. Okay, here we go. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap it around the base of our drill bit and put it into my drill here and tighten it up. I think I went the wrong way the first time. And the reason we're going to do this is because when you use the drill, it's gonna start pulling all the little pumpkin shavings up here. So this is gonna get really messy and we don't want it getting pulled inside of here because that's really hard to clean. I did this a couple years ago without the cling wrap and let's just say it was a big ordeal to clean up. So that's all you need to do to prep it. I'll keep using, you know, the piece of cling wrap each time I go in and out. And now it's time to start working on our design. So I'm gonna take the lid off my pumpkin and just set it out of the way because we don't really need it right now. And I'm gonna start by doing some flowers along the bottom here in my design. And the way I'm gonna do the flowers is I'm just gonna do a drill bit at the center and then do about six holes around it like the petals. Just kind of cute and abstract but very easy to do. So I'm gonna put the center of my first flower right about here, just carefully angle the drill bit, like so, and I'm just gonna carefully drill into the pumpkin. And there you go, look at that. We've got our first nice hole, super easy to drill into the pumpkin because it's very soft. I usually have a hard time drilling things just because you have to have some level of strength to hold the drill bit in place, but this is really easy, I'm able to do it and it just goes right in and out. So I'm just gonna keep working on my pattern. And now I'll just kind of brush these off. You can even, you know, come from the inside, come from the outside, just kind of clean them off. And now I've got my first flower. So I want to add a stem to this one, but here's a really cool idea. Instead of trying to cut a very thin sliver with a knife or something, I'm just gonna scratch away the outside. You can use a knife to do it. You can maybe even use your fingernail. I've got this little piece in the toolkit here. I actually don't even know what this is, but it's got a nice point. So I'm just gonna use this to kind of scratch through the orange skin of the pumpkin. And it'll look even without the light on, it'll look um, a lighter color because I'll cut, scratch away the orange, but then even with the light on, it will be able to shine through some. So I'm gonna scratch this part away. Okay, I'm gonna try this drill bit. This one's a little sharper at the end. Just slowly, carefully scratch away like so to make my nice stem. So here we go. I've just kind of scratched away there. Nice and light. I can go deeper if I want, more of the light to shine through when I turn it off. I'm okay if you just see it coming through there. So I'm gonna do a couple more flowers on here, um, going around, and then I'm gonna show you one more idea with the drill bit technique. Now don't be afraid to play around and use different size drill bits. I'm gonna go ahead and swap this guy out and go with a slightly smaller one. But also you can see just how awesome this plastic wrap is being. You can see how it's pulling stuff up there, but the plastic wrap means it's not all inside here, which will make your life a lot easier. Now I will want to clean this off when I'm entirely done using this, and I'm gonna carefully wipe it off with a bunch of paper towels. I've got this nice 9 30 second size here. You can see there I did the two circles too close together so the drill bit caught the front of that but that's okay it doesn't have to be perfect so just like I did on my first one I'm gonna go back and add stems you could also add leaves at the bottoms of the stems if you wanted to you could use a larger drill bit and a smaller one and then just kind of take a knife if you wanted to carve it out a little more or you can move the drill some as you're drilling to create that pattern all right so here's what we've got so far a nice pile of pumpkin shavings three messy drill bits that I'm gonna have to clean off and a pumpkin with some cute flowers on it. But you might be thinking to yourself, okay, that's really cool and all to use the drill bit, but all you've made is flowers, big whoop. If I'm not planning on doing a flower theme, how can this actually help me? Well, I'm gonna show you one other idea that you can do with this, and I did this years ago when I first used the drill bit to carve a pumpkin, and everybody freaked out about it and thought it was really awesome. So here's where the smaller drill bits come in. We're gonna wanna use some smaller sizes. I'm gonna grab this 3 16th size drill bit here. I'm also going to want this 5 30 seconds. And these sizes aren't exact. These are just if you're trying to figure out what might compare. I'm just trying to give you some numbers. 
And then here we've got this size. I have no idea what it is. So I'm going to start with my bigger one first. Again, I'm putting it all into the cling wrap so it doesn't make a big mess inside the drill bit. You will thank me if you've ever done it without the cling wrap before because it makes your life a lot easier. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a nice little bumblebee and the bumblebee is going to be flying around the flowers, but that's not the exciting part. What's going to be cool is I'm going to leave a trail that'll sparkle behind the little bumblebee. So I'm going to start for my bumblebee. I'm just going to put it in and kind of go back and forth to create a oval shape and I'll also do a round spot for the head and then I'll go back and add some wings on but then we'll also go ahead and do the trail going around here. So for my bee, I'm going to keep squeezing the handle, go in and just kind of slide this way going in and out or I can even take it out all the way and go in right next to it. If I'd wanted to I could have grabbed a larger build bit size to speed this part up. But I didn't because I already swapped them out. So there we go. Got a nice little oval for my body of the bee. I'm going to do a bee, the head right here. There you go. Nice and cute. I'll come back and add on the wings. I'll just kind of chip away the outside kind of like I did with the stems. You know, I'll kind of cut out a bigger section like that for the wings. But now we're going to do a fun trail following the bee. And so I'm just going to start with my big drill bit and kind of create the trail. So I'm just going to kind of go along haphazardly, up and down, add some cute curly cues to it at different points, and then I'll come back with my smaller sizes and add even more detail to it. Alright, so following my bee, I've got this nice trail that works its way around the pumpkin. You might need to brush your pumpkin off to get all these little shaving bits. I'll go ahead and clean this off better later on. But I've got a trail going all the way around. You can see it pretty well following these larger dots. Now I'm still gonna use this same size drill bit. I'm just gonna kind of do some offset along the trail just so the trail's not quite so precise. And then I'm gonna come back in with the smaller sizes. All right, so I've got my trail finished drilling out behind my bumblebee. Wait, she's right there. You can see the trail kind of going up and around and I've added in some kind of offset of the larger size drill bit. So now I'm gonna go down to this next size, smaller size drill bit. Just gonna swap it out and I'm gonna keep using the cling wrap because it makes life a lot easier. See all the pumpkin goo? All that would have been inside the drill. And now I'm going to come along and do these smaller ones along that same general path that I did. So I finished with my pumpkin, mostly. I went ahead and I used the little drill bit, poked it through to help clean out the holes better. And there's still, you know, some of the little shavings on it. So I had this brilliant idea, if I do say so myself. And I took my pumpkin outside, took a Ryobi leaf blower that I had, and I blew the whole thing off, blew from the inside, and that just sent all the little pieces that were still in the holes just flying. It was great. It looks really clean. A lot more polished now. So the last thing I want to do for my bubble bean... I want to add wings. So you can do this a variety of ways. I'm gonna start by taking my knife and just with the tip, I'm gonna make a nice little incision here where I want the top of the wing to be. Lice with the tip of my knife down the edges. So I'm just gonna cut along here and carefully use the knife tip, cutting away from myself so I don't get hurt. And just slowly cut under the orange of the pumpkin. And then you can see I've added wings to my bumblebee. So now my pumpkin is all done and it's time to put the candle in it and look at the finished results. One last quick word, I do wanna make sure I clean the drill bits out fairly soon because the pumpkin will dry on there and get all gross. I actually started this last night and then I wasn't able to finish it because I had other things going on. So this one, it's kind of dried on here. So this is gonna take a little bit more work to get clean. But these ones that are still wet, you can kind of just twist them you know, I've got a tissue here, twist them through, good as new, I'll set that one to the side. Do the same thing with this one. If the pumpkin is still fresh, it'll usually slide right out. And because we use the cling wrap, it prevented any from getting caught in the drill. So just make sure you clean them off sooner versus later if you want your life to, life to be easier.
and they're going out in three, two, one. And this is what makes this project cool. You can see, we've got our bumblebee there, and now you can see the trail where he's flown along. I am super happy with how this turned out. Very cute and just whimsical. You can also use the same technique of leaving a little trail here. You can use it for fireflies, you can use it for fairies, you can use it for just a pathway, you can use it just as a simple design. But I think it's a really cool touch and just really makes this pumpkin extra special. And what's hard to see right now is actually you can see the light coming through the stems. There's a stem right here. And in person you can see the light shining through the skin where the orange has been peeled away, but you can't really pick it up on the camera. And then also same with the bee's wings. I can see a little bit of light coming through it, even though the camera doesn't want to pick it up. And there you go, that's all there is to it. So there you go, I am super happy with how this turned out. And I hope that this video was helpful for all of you also. Especially let me know if the cling wrap tip, if that helped you. Because when I did this for the first time a couple years back, I was like, it turned out epic, but never again will I do this because I had such a hard time cleaning the drill and cleaning the drill bits off. But the cling wrap definitely saved me today, made it no big deal. Cleanup's not hard at all if you don't let your drill bits sit with the pumpkin and dry out overnight then it's a little harder but anyways don't do that but and it'll be really easy to clean up but i'm very glad with how this turned out so if you found the cling wrap tip helpful or if you just like the video in general make sure you give this video a like and leave any comments below thoughts and tell me what you're going to use these ideas for and last but not least if you have not already subscribed to me but you also want to see more awesome pumpkin ideas, you want to see more Halloween costume ideas and more fall crafting projects and all kinds of great inspiration, you should hit the subscribe button that's down below somewhere beneath me. And also you should hit the little bell thing beside it because I think that turns on notifications. I need to actually look up what that button's called so I can like sound more intelligent. But anyways, that's all I've got for right now. I am in the last little clip here going to show you what I do with my pumpkin seeds because I did say that I save them and I cook them. So I'll show you what I do for that. But as far as this little pumpkin goes, I'm all done with him for today. He's going to sit and keep getting to shine brightly. My little bumblebee friend will keep me company. I hope you all have a great week and happy crafting. So step number one to prep my pumpkin seeds, I'm going to rinse all the pumpkin goo stuff off because I really don't want to snack on these while they still have pumpkin goo on them. And then I'm just going to spread them out on a cookie sheet with some paper towels on it to dry. Now I'm going to drizzle a little bit of olive oil on here, add some salt, stir it all up, spread them in a nice thin layer, pop them in the oven. The oven's heated to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. And after 30 minutes, they are ready to come out because they are this nice golden brown. And now enjoy your pumpkin seeds.